Hi, Max. Hi, Brian. I'm great. How are you? Winning in the National Football League is not easy, you know, but that's what we're here to do. This is a unique opportunity in sport. Not to over-dramatize this whole situation, but I can't imagine a more important time in the history of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So your chance to be in the stands for the 2021 season starts today. Season ticket member renewals will open up today. Your chance to get tickets to be in the stands for the 2021 season. Go to jaguars.com slash my account today and you'll get the chance to do just that. And welcome into Jaguars drive time on a Tuesday morning, the tampering period. New league year opens up tomorrow morning. Exciting times that Nothing more exciting, Brian, than the optimism that there might be full stands. Yeah, yeah I heard some of the ticketing salespeople yesterday talking to uh, season ticket members about renewals. And, you know, they were asked the question, you know, how many are you selling? And the thought is the entire stadium. So it's optimistic at this point. But as people get vaccinated and as infections drop, um, you might as well shoot for that. So it's fun to see. And also 10 games. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to have two preseason games and eight regular season games, or you're going to have nine regular season games and one preseason game. And there's still a thought on London and nothing's done there yet. So there is a little fluidity to this, but a full schedule and a full stadium with the new coach and Trevor Lawrence and all of those things. Man, the optimism hasn't been this high in Jacksonville since 1999. Yes, and you want the chance if you're a season ticket member to renew those tickets, go to jaguars.com slash my account today to make that happen. All right, there's other news. It's free agency. And, John, you are on Twitter. You're seeing all the news about this, and it <laughs> went exactly the way we talked about it on the Jaguars Reporter podcast yesterday. This team was 1-15 in last season. There are a ton of holes to fill. It wasn't swinging for the fences, spending all this money, but they got some complimentary pieces that – they really needed to compete this year. Yeah, I could barely hear you, Schlen, because as you guys know, I live about three minutes from the stadium, and I can hear the pitchforks and the torches <laughs> with the, oh, you know, it, it's, uh, look, I, you know, I would be a hypocrite if I got on here and said, oh, why aren't they signing big name guys? Why aren't they striking for that top list? I want to get two of the top five guys in free agency like this is recruiting. I've always said I think teams go way too overboard this time of year paying great salary money for essentially good players. Look, they haven't addressed tight end free agency yet. I, I still think that's a play here. I like the safety. I like the defensive linemen they went after. The rest of it is making sure that you're ready for the draft. I get that people expected more. I thought at the beginning of all this, when we saw some of the names that eventually got franchised, that it might be louder than this, like there might be more noise, like there might be more sexy picks this time of year. 
But once some of those guys went off, it's not about hitting a home run in March. You don't get to the Super Bowl in March. It's about being good this season. I particularly like Rayshon Jenkins. I particularly like Roy Robertson Harris. It seems like those are solid moves with a lot of smart, fill the roster until we can get to the draft type of positions elsewhere. I'm not sure how you see it, Brian. Well, no, I, I'm with you. I, I made some calls around the league last night, and the word that I got on the safety was you paid top of the market for Sean Gibson a couple of years ago, and this is a guy with similar upside, but is it going to cost you top of the market? Um, I think the word is value, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they found good players ascending. I mean, in, in the case of, of the running back, you know, no, he's 30. I mean, he's, he's not an ascending player. I'm not sure Philip Dorsett is an ascending player. Those guys are role players. But a guy like um, Rashawn Slater and um, Roy Robertson-Harris, is that, got the right mm-hmm. name right? Uh, these are guys, the defensive tackle was compared to a yeah, Malik Jackson-style player. Built a little bit differently. You know, 6'5", 300 pounds, long arms, powerful guy, can be a mismatch on guards. Um, you know, they're out there looking for guys, kind of like the Patriots used to. They used to sign guys that you, you really hadn't heard of because they were system. They fit exactly right. what they wanted to do. Sounds like Urban Meyer, Trent Baalke, and their staffs have gotten together and found players that fit what they want to do, and they've got the right value for those players. I like it. Because remember, we talked about the salary cap. Now you're going to have a franchise quarterback. You've got to look beyond just this year. Mm -hmm. You've got to look two, three, four years down the road. And, you know, if you found value, guys that you can plug in, uh, Sidney Jones, I guess, is just resigning. That's great value. That's a player you know something about. um, And you're not paying top of the market for him. So it gives you a lot of flexibility, not just for this year, because, again, they're coming from 1-15, in but two, three, four years down the road. Right. And not to mention you have 11 draft picks and with this extra cap space, have the chance to maybe pay some of your own guys and develop that way. So all good things. Everyone take a deep breath. It's going to be a Can I just throw one, more, one more thing before we get to yeah. big things. If you scroll down the list and I'm on Pro Football Talk's website and you look at some of the names, John, that signed yesterday, uh, Adam Pankey, uh, PJ Hall, you, you're seeing names, Austin Johnson, um, Hold on, there's two or three more. Uh, Daniel Carlson. The Adam Pankey? Yeah, exactly. Uh, defensive tackle okay. Vincent Taylor, right? I think one of the things that you saw where there were a lot of players <laughs> that signed who you hadn't heard of or I hadn't heard of. You know, they were second-tier players mm-hmm. or played in, in you know, the NFC and we didn't see them. They're not big-name players, but a lot of guys like that. And we talked about this on the Reporters Podcast. What you've got is... You've got a salary cap that has shrunk and teams who are trying to figure out how to make their salary cap work this year. So a lot of mid-level guys found jobs on day one. And then there's always the idea that people have figured out that paying top of the market the first two or three days of free agency is a good way to put yourself in a hard spot. Absolutely. Just because you have money doesn't mean you have to spend it. Your mom taught you that, uh, didn't she? My dad. Yeah. Both of them, actually. The trips to Limited 2 when I was younger. That taught me well. Here we go. Big thing one. Oh, Schlin Stanek. Free agency update. The Jaguars keeping five of their own and reportedly signing six new guys. But before all this had to happen, they had to figure out what they were doing with left tackle Cam Robinson. And the franchise tag at times has a negative connotation with players, but Urban Meyer told us not with Cam Robinson. He spoke at TPC on Friday. Yeah, it's been real positive. I, I've known Cam since he was in college, and and uh, our, we got an excellent line coach in George Warhop. We, I like our line. Uh, can we play better? You, you're darn right where we are going to play better. But starting with Linder, our center, Norwell, AJ, uh, Jawan at the right tackle, and Cam, we just got to get better. And every one of them can play better, and uh, I like all five guys. And I think Cam's got a really good future. Speaking of the offensive linemen, here are some guys that they have kept. You see Cam Robinson, you see Tyler Shatley. Really like the move here with Dewan Smooth. That's a guy who is ascending in the right direction. Let's go ahead and just glue stick Sidney Jones on there. That news broke about 10 minutes ago before the show. And let's take a look at the guys they have reportedly signed as of yesterday. You're going to see six names here. We talked about the defensive tackle from the Bears. 
This kick returner out of the Lions, I was watching highlight videos of him. Agnew, right? Yes, he has returned four touchdowns, kicks, one touchdown, punts. Very speedy guy. Kind of think of like a D.D. Westbrook there. So overall, adding some pieces that you needed to add after a 1-15 in season. So now let's go to big thing two, which is what do you expect for the rest of the week? The new league year starts tomorrow. Still a long week ahead of all kinds of moves can be made. But one thing for sure is that Urban Meyer is really liking shaping this roster to the vision that he sees it. Yeah, this is uh, – I'm I'm waking up in the middle of the night staring at the ceiling trying to put this – all of us are trying to put this thing together because this is – you just look at the history, which I have in the last year, just looking through the history of the NFL, how many chances do you get – to build a roster like we are. You have cap space, 11 draft picks. You can't screw it up, man. I mean, that's, you got to get the right people. You got to get the right, and our coaches, and uh, the, the number one thing I'm looking for is a mesh between the personnel department and our coaches. Big thing three is leverage. We have been talking about this since January. It is a great time to be the Jaguars right now. All kinds of cap space, 11 draft picks, and we're seeing this free agency period shake out a little differently. You have teams like the Jaguars who are playing it more conservative. You have teams like the Patriots who are known for being conservative, have Cam Newton as their quarterback, and are just throwing things at the wall to me. Just throwing all kinds of money and trying to make something stick. It could work, John. It also could not work. Well, again, I said it at the top. Uh, I've never been a guy who, you know, in years past, whenever the Jaguars were in the news this time of year as signing, you know, this top guy or that top guy, that always made me nervous. It worked once with the Calais Campbell, A.J. Boye offseason. But beyond that, you know, it, it's just not really my cup of tea. I, I prefer draft. I prefer develop. And I always thought that maybe not second tier guy, but after that first day, those were the guys you wind up sitting there in November and saying, that guy was a pretty good signing. So. To me, getting to big thing two, which I'm kind of jumping the gun, the rest of the week, you know, if, if they come out of this with one more uh, element of stout, if you will, on the defensive line and tight end, starting to build that a little bit, the other positions, if you think about it, everybody's saying, well, corner. Everybody's saying, well, wide receiver. Everybody's saying, well, running back. That was, those were impact positions you talked about before free agency. They got guys who were there, but young running back in the draft is not going to surprise me. Young cornerback in the draft is not going to surprise me. And young speed wide receiver in the draft is not going to surprise me. Those all make sense. You've got guys who can play there, and you've also got room to grow in those positions. So that seems like what they're doing here. We'll find out as we go forward. They didn't sign anybody yesterday or come to terms with anybody yesterday uh, on either side of the bowl that would prohibit any player at any spot in the draft, which is interesting because most teams, if you go back and look at the history of free agency, are looking to go, okay, we're selling there. We got a, a wide receiver signed Kenny Galladay, right? So we don't have to worry about wide receiver in the draft. The Jaguars approach is completely different. Again, when you're one in 15, you can look at it different. No matter what your expectations are of what you want to achieve in your first year here, when you're one in 15, you can talk about the holes and start filling them. I love the fact that they've put a safety back there, a six foot one, 220 pound safety next to Daniel Thomas, who I think is 5'10, 205, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's a veteran guy. He's been a starter in Los Angeles. And now you've got Daniel Thomas, who showed us something. Okay. So do you have to use your pick at 25 or 33 on one of the best safeties in the draft? No. You can let the draft come to you because these are solid guys that you can play with as you build your team. Nobody says, hey, the Jaguars are going to be a playoff contender next year. Could they win games and surprise people? Absolutely. But they're building in a really stable way. And I love that, that they don't preclude themselves from taking anybody based on who they have signed in free agency. Yeah, and I think it's it's almost a bit of a surprise, at least to the national media you're watching on ESPN. Because you're used to the Jaguar spending. Well, that, and you're also used to the flashiness of, of Urban Meyer of coming in here and all eyes being on him and everyone expected him to swing to the fences and make a statement. But this is a new regime that, you know, he wants to build from the bottom up. And that doesn't mean doing it all here right now. He's expecting to be here for many years to come. And that's a good thing. Now, don't get me wrong, John. Hey, if, Shalane, if, you want to see a statement? 
Go ahead. Tune in April 29th at 8.01. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty big. There's a statement, a statement. Pretty big statement. Pretty bold statement. Don't get me wrong. If they were to go after a tight end, you know, if they were to go spend some money and sign a big contract right now, I, I, I wouldn't change my mind. I mean, I think that's great. Fine, right? Go and get that guy that you can't necessarily bring in in free agency. I mean, I, yesterday we did on uh, the Jaguars Reporters Podcast, who do you want to see in Teal by the end of the week? Well, I said Hunter Henry. I, I just have this vision of this tight end in the middle of the field, a good-sized guy who moves well. I keep thinking of Nick Foles and Carson Wentz with Zach Ertz a couple of years ago in yep. Philadelphia. In the middle of the field, I think that, boy, will that open things up on the edges for guys like DJ Chark. Mm -hmm. I want to see that. Okay, well, if they don't do it, that must mean they've got the plan for one of those guys in the draft. Um, you can't necessarily solve every problem. But they have filled with some nice players, even though no one knows them. Yeah, and I think tight end would make the most sense, John, for all of us. If you're going to go big, that's where you want to go big this week. Yeah, and again, it may not be big according to the lists. And I'm okay with that. We've, you know, the litany of free agent busts at tight end are so big, not just, not just for this franchise, but for scary. many franchises. I have no problem. If they have a guy targeted a tight end that they like, that they feel like a developing player, Jonu Smith was at the top of a lot of lists because he had eight touchdowns last year. And I'm not knocking on Jonu Smith, but having eight touchdowns when everybody's worried about Derrick Henry is a, different, is a different school of fish than not doing it without Derrick Henry. So who knows if that was their thinking, but... I frankly didn't see tight ends at the top of the list that I was like, okay, I'm going to do cartwheels if they get here. <laughs> I believe they'll get a tight end. It'll, it, it'll be a guy who fits them. And then I think that's also a position that they'll try to draft and get that guy that they can develop on their own. That's usually how you get big-time tight end. Most of these guys everybody talks about, Gronk in, in New England, Kittle in San Francisco, Kelsey in uh, Kansas City, not first-round guys. And, and guys who developed. So that's the way to do it. It just won't, if you do that, it won't be week one of 2021. And that's quite all right. Good things take time. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> We know that here. Yes, we do. And that is big things, all kinds of updates for free agency. Stay tuned to Jaguars.com for all the news this week. When we come back, what is trending around the NFL? All kinds of things coming up on Jaguars Drive Time. Jags Drive Time is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. By Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And Baptist Health, changing healthcare for good. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk. Checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk. Checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. Bold statement. Saving money with Geico is almost better than watching football. Think about it. When you're watching the game, yelling at the quarterback to throw the ball, throw it, Williams is wide open, why are you doing this to me? Use that rocket arm, come on! They don't listen to you. But if you went into a Geico office and yelled, someone please help me save some money on car insurance, everyone would hop to it. Except the intern because it's his first day and he doesn't even have a computer yet. See? Better. Switch and save with Geico. It's almost better than sports. Jaguars fans, Brian Sexton here. I've discovered something that will take your tailgates to the next level this football season. Bernie Grills. You've never seen anything like these portable all-wood grills. Bernie's are convenient, affordable, and simple to use with no messy cleanup. Bernie's real alder wood flavor makes burgers and brats taste delicious. I grilled some steaks on mine the other night, and they were incredible. So get your Bernie Grill for the next game at BernieGrill.com or at Amazon. Bernie Grill. Light. Grill. Done. Welcome to a new era of Jaguars football. The reload has begun, beginning with new head coach Urban Meyer. Don't miss out on the best seats before they're gone. Lock in your tickets right now. 
season ticket renewals start today. Go to Jaguars.com to make that happen. We're back. Jaguars drive time on a Tuesday. The new league year opens up tomorrow. And we were just talking before the break of what's trending in the NFL. We were saying, oh, Hunter Henry's still out there. That could work. New England Patriots just signed him. What is going on in New England? Well, if you remember in 2010, uh, and you might not, the, the, um, the New England Patriots drafted Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. And for a couple of seasons there, before Aaron Hernandez got sidetracked, um, the Patriots were a tight end center team. And Tom Brady destroyed defenses in the middle of the field with those two guys. And I, and I think if you look, they've tried over the years to kind of get back to that two tight end thing. Um, it appears that with Cam Newton back at quarterback, Bill Belichick is saying we're going back to the days of tight end centered, middle of the field, uh, create mismatches for our guys on the outside. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. is something. They're spending I, some money. Yeah. They, wow. Yeah. Wow is right. So let's get to what's trending in the NFL. And we haven't had the chance to talk about Drew Brees and his career. And it was on the Today Show yesterday. I was watching live. Big fan of the Today Show. And he is joining the team at NBC. And if it's any surprise at all to uh, absolutely no one, John, he'll have a career in TV. Yeah, he'll do well. I mean, he's he's an engaging guy. He has expertise. Uh, you know, uh, incredible career for a guy who was, I don't want to say out of the league at one point, but incredible shoulder issues at some point. Came back from it. Uh, first ballot Hall of Famer, and I'm sure he'll do fine on NBC. I'll never forget, I was sitting in this studio with Mike Malarkey doing his radio show one night, and uh, the, the topic came up of Drew Brees. And so we waited, and he told the story on air. He was the offensive coordinator with Nick Saban in Miami mm -hmm. back when Drew Brees was making visits. And yesterday the story went around that the people in New Orleans, Mickey Loomis, when Drew Brees left to go to Miami, they thought, well, there, there's no way he's coming back here. That's Miami. This is post-Katrina New Orleans. You know, the Dolphins have had success. We haven't. Mike Malarkey told me that on the flight back to New Orleans, and they hadn't signed him, was as depressed as he'd ever been as a football coach because he had fought so hard for the, the, the Dolphins to sign Drew Brees mm -hmm. that he was just glum the whole way. And Brees didn't really care because he knew he had an offer coming. Um, Malarkey just, he just his shoulders slumped as he told the story. <laughs> One more Drew Brees story. Um, it was 2011 or 12, and we were in New Orleans for a preseason game, and I was watching, watching Drew Brees who stood at his own 45-yard line and was throwing go routes, right? And it was just at the five-yard line, at the five-yard line, at the five-yard line, the ball. The receivers could just have done this and caught the ball because Drew Brees put it on the same spot mm -hmm. every single time. It was amazing to watch him throw. Not the most physically gifted guy. He wasn't this great big strapping guy. Right. Um, but, man, with the ball in his hands, well, the numbers say it all. You know, all-time leading passer. Yes, an incredible career. And, we'll and get to I know I look like Jim Contori over here today yeah, because you. I keep on going to the year. So I can't always hear what we said today. Uh, Hunter Henry to New England. Have we talked about that? Yes. Off the top of the show, John. Get with okay, us. Okay, sorry. I, I could barely hear. So <laughs> it's okay. It's, uh, it's quite all right. All right, Ozone. Yeah, they're going back to the they're going back to the uh, the 2010-11 team that that had De Hernandez and Gronkowski together, yep. and and that was a really dangerous gotcha. team. Yes, it was. Let's look at what else is trending in the NFL. This is something I woke up to this morning and went, huh? I kind of like this Washington football team. Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know what I noticed from this one is um, Yannick Ngakwe. Yep. Right. He got a two-year, twenty-six million dollar contract. Um, good for him. Right. I mean, what was said about him when everyone was screaming, pay Jan, was he was one dimensional and he was going to scare people with his ability to get lost in a game if you were not in a position to just all out attack the passer. So I think the Jaguars offered him 15 or 16 over four years and he's settling for 26 in two. Um, now he's young. He's 26. He'll get another chance at it in two more years. But you don't know, you know, whether he's going to get that big deal or not. It, what you are eventually kind of plays out in the NFL. And um, I, he never got the big deal that he mm -hmm. screamed about. It tells no lies. Yeah.
well, I was trying to keep up with this graphic and keep up with names, but so much has happened even since we started this show. For example, Von Miller, I was like, huh, wonder what happens with him. The Broncos are keeping him in Denver. Great move there. So stay with it on Twitter and Jaguars.com. We'll try to stay up to date of all things free agency this week. When we come back, March is Women's History Month. We will highlight that right here on Jaguars Drive Time. Jack Drive Time is presented in part by Green Finders Homes. Homes that fit your lifestyle. Nick Grill, everyone's invited. And at Deco, visit at DecoUSA.com. Dreamfinders Homes has a simple commitment to their home buyers. Deliver unsurpassed quality, uncompromising value, and an extraordinary level of customization you simply won't find with other home builders. With over 40 communities to choose from, you'll find a location you love and the home of your dreams. Dreamfinders has townhomes, single-family homes, and custom estate homes starting from the high 100s and a wide selection of move-in ready homes. Quality, value, customization, that's the Dreamfinders difference. Call 904-738-0165 or online at dreamfindershomes.com. Dreamfinders Homes, the official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Price is subject to change without notice equal housing opportunity jaguars fans here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go exclusively from tiaa bank the jacksonville jaguars visa debit card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide and it's yours free when you open a yield pledge checking account order yours today visit tiaabank.com slash jags card TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Why live with foot or ankle pain? If you have persistent pain, numbness, tingling, burning pain on the bottom of your foot, or swelling that doesn't improve with home treatment, it may be time to see Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Our foot and ankle specialists have innovative new options to help you get back in the swing of things without persistent pain that slows you down. Call JOI 2000 or go to joionline.net for an appointment. We're back, Jaguars Drive Time on Tuesday morning, brought to you by the Jet Home Rooms. And March is Women's History Month, and we're continuing our coverage of highlighting some great ladies here with the Jaguars organization. One of them is combating mental health issues in the NFL, and here for the Jaguars, she is awesome, Dr. Franco. And the other is a new employee who is joining the Jaguars at just the right time. Check it out. There is something different about being one of the few women in the space though. And so as I'm setting boundaries, I'm thinking carefully about um, how can I connect in a way that's professional first and foremost, but then also effective. So I'll, know, I'll notice that you know some of these, particularly very young men, will look to me maybe um, more as a mother figure. So I do think that there are ways, it's, there's an added layer of work that goes into boundary setting the way I need to, to be effective and appropriate. We've really got to get players immediate access to mental health resources as readily as they would have access to a resource if they sprained an ankle, right? When that initiative happened, it really bumped up against something entirely separate happening in the field of mental health where women are increasingly represented in that area. So the founders were men, but now it's mostly women working in mental health. So as this initiative happened in the league, it really created an opportunity for women to be folded in. So far, I mean, there's been lots of positive changes. I mean, whether it's in the, you know, the front offices or, you know, with league officials. Um, I read an article the other day. I saw that Jonathan Bean was just hired as the NFL's chief diversity and inclusion officer. So I feel like we're making a lot of steps in the right direction, not only as an organization here at the Jaguars, but also the NFL as a whole. Um, I think, you know, everyone's path and career path is, is different, uh, but certainly, you know, stay open minded. Um, and if you get something in your head and, you know, you're determined to make it happen, I think just continue to confidently work towards your dreams uh, and, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. Find a mentor in the industry that might be able to, you know, potentially offer you advice that you didn't even know you needed. Um, and just be confident in yourself, you know, own it and continue to, you know, walk confidently in the direction of your dreams. It'll happen. You love to see it. That's just two of the awesome females that we are highlighting 
this March and Women's History Month here with the Jaguars. So stay with us all month long here on Jaguars Drive Time when we come back. Some ozone snapshot for free agency periods. All kinds of news coming up here. It's the Good Greek Spiro, and I am proud to announce that Good Greek Moving and Storage is now the official mover of your Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are making all of the right moves, and you should too. So when it's time for you to move, do it like the Jags and call the Good Greek. Simply dial star star Greek from your cell or go to goodgreek.com. That's goodgreek.com. Good Greek Moving and Storage, official movers of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. The best thing about working at Fair and Farrah is all of the employees. We all work together. It's extremely enjoyable to come to work every day. There's a, um, a common cause or goal. No matter what your job is, we're all there for the client. We are dedicated to our clients 100%. We do everything it takes to maximize the value of their claims. Fair and Farrah is really the Farrah family. When they choose us, they choose a family to fight for them and to protect them and to make sure that they're in a good place and that they have somebody on their side. Farrah and Farrah, here for you, here for good. Jacksonville. This broadcast is ozone friendly. The ozone. Ozone snapshot. We're going to El Paso. Adrian has questions about free agency. Surprise, surprise. Unless we're trying to sign a top five free agent and are saving money for something like that, I'm concerned that we're picking up depth players on day one of negotiations. It feels like waiting in line just to end up buying batteries on Black Friday. I don't know who does that. Go ahead. Jim. Well, after he wrote that, he picked up his pitchfork and went down to the stadium. So, um, it, look, that's going to be the perception of this. Rayshon Jenkins is not a backup player. Uh, Robertson Harris, not a backup player. Those were the moves that are frontline starter guys. The rest of them, are they backups? Are they role players? Uh, we'll see how it plays out, but um, you know, I guess I understand that there's going to be concern. There's going to be panic because so much of this lead up was about this perception that if, if, if you're not going and getting frontline guy free agency, that you're not trying, you're not improving. Uh, that's the nature of Twitter, the 24 cycle. I'm seeing people on, say, on Twitter calling, this is a disaster. It's just not. It, it's one day, and you don't build a Super Bowl-winning franchise based on your first day of free agency in the first week, in the first month of your regime, Brian. I would say take a deep breath and go back to uh, 2019. Uh, the Jaguars made the biggest of splashes when they acquired Nick Foles. Mm -hmm. And we talked all offseason. You know, this was a big-armed quarterback who had been in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP, would never buy a dinner or wait for a table in Philadelphia again, right? One of the great sports towns in America. And uh, we only saw this thing going up. In fact, I, I remember telling the story that I didn't think that the Jaguars would have a shot at Trevor Lawrence because they were going to win for a couple of years with Nick Foles. Yep. Um, how'd that turn out? Uh, different than right. what you thought. Splashes are just that. Some of them are big and some of them are not. Mm -hmm. No matter how big big you think they are they don't turn out that way so you've got to let these things play out a little bit here's I, I likened it earlier to the Patriots always now they're they're out of character right here okay yeah. with what they're doing right now but they were always grabbing guys that you had really never heard of and plugging them into their system you know the Patriot way and of course Tom Brady made a lot of that happen this seems to me like just good solid players some of whom will come in and play a role, some of whom will come in and get their chance to start, all at the right 
value. Yes. Value, value, value. You also look at these positions that are being brought in and it makes sense. It is a need. They need these positions. It's not like they're just going and getting a guy to get a guy and saying, oh, you know, maybe we'll use you week three. They need these spots they're to be filled. They're putting themselves in a position, John, to make good decisions on draft day. And as you mentioned, the draft is where you build a winner. Free agency is where you supplement. Yeah. One thing before we move on, Pete Prisco made the point, whether it was this morning or last night, the reason there's not a lot of movement at the wide receiver position right now is because you've got a lot of number two receivers looking for number one money. And that sort of sums up a lot of what happens in free agency and a lot of mistakes teams make is it's easy to get caught up in what the fans are saying. And, oh, we've got to make sure that the fans are happy or that we have a, a depth chart filled out. No matter what the position, you don't want to pay number one money for a number two player. And I think Trent Baalke gave us a hint of that when he talked about value. Every time he talked before all this started, it was once last week, and then as he was talking, anytime I heard him talk, he was talking about value. And he also talked about over a three-year period, we're going to spend to the cap. So sort of a precursor of all this was maybe not to expect so much. Building through the draft, yes, being smart and measured in free agency. You know, I, again, I know I'm going to be in the minority among fans, but I like it. As long as you're happy, John, we're happy. So let's go to Georgia. I'm not happy, Shlen. I'm okay with this. All right. You're very rarely happy, but I have a feeling you'll be happy at the draft, like you mentioned. Let's go to Georgia. Our guy Swamp Dude is a little confused. Let's clarify here. Please explain the reason for the national media writing about the Jags having no compensatory picks for 11 years and the formula for determining the comp picks. I'm confused. Well, I included this because I knew today was going to be all free agency all the time, so I thought we'd step away for a second. Compensatory picks came out last week. Jaguars haven't had one since 2010. It's very simple why they don't have one. It's not the league disliking the Jaguars. When you participate in free agency as much as the Jaguars have, and you don't lose big-time guys, compensatory is all about this. For the 2021 draft, it's about whether or not you gained more than you lost in free agency the previous offseason. If you gain more, you're not going to get compensatory picks. If you lose more, you will. The Jaguars, because they've always been chasing free agents, haven't gotten one since 2010. Hopefully what will happen to this franchise, start drafting well, guys start, teams start signing your players, you don't need to participate in free agency as much, then you get compensatory picks. That's it in a nutshell. It all makes sense. The Ravens have done it masterfully. In fact, uh, I read somewhere that the Zeitler move was all. The, Kevin Zeitler, the guard, the former Bengal and mm -hmm. Giant, uh, with an eye, the contract is structured so they can play with him for two years and then collect a third or fourth round compensatory pick in, uh, after two seasons are up and, and he's, he's uh, he'll be a nine or ten year player at that point yep. and they're ready to move on. So, I mean, they're really, yeah, really good at it. I think teams spend too much time worried about compensatory picks, but that's just me. Well, it, it, it's a strategy. It's fine to get them, but... It's a strategy, yeah. no, and it's you. one Jaguars fans don't recognize because the Jaguars have never played it. Right. So it's worth explaining to oh, people. It'd be to nice people. to get a few. Yeah. It, it's worth yeah. explaining to people because third-round picks are, no are generally starters. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully in the next two or three years, we all become better educated on how the formula works. Let's hope so. That means things are moving in the right direction. All right, that's Ozone Snapshot. That is Jaguars drive time, tampering period almost to an end. A new league year starts tomorrow, and free agents will become official. So stay with us. Jaguars.com will have all the updates, and we will see you next week.